What's up, everybody? Welcome to 411 News. I am your host with the most be great. So, not gonna hold you long. Just gonna jump into a little bit of news and get you back on your way. Just want, just want to start your week, or by the time this drop midweek off, with a little sunshine from the great state of Hawaii. Is where I'm at. All right. So first, let's talk about the goat, the tennis goat, Serena Williams. She announced her retirement after her, um, after her last game. Uh, I think it was last week or week for last. Uh, she announced her retirement. She said she's gonna go off. She wanna start some business ventures and doing different things like that. So with her, a hey, salute out to you. You have you have changed the world of tennis. You have opened doors to all black females who wants to get out there and do their damn thing. You've opened them doors to, to them and you show you show people race has nothing to do with going for your dreams and make stuff happen. So Serena Williams, good job to you. Uh, keep up the good work. So let's go ahead and jump into this entertainment news. Something to put a smile on your face, something to make you laugh, and something to make you be like, hmm. Let's start with uh, the baby making machines. I call them the baby making machines, so that's what they are. Let's start off with Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon has welcomed baby number nine into the world. Um, I believe it is with his uh, his on off on off on and off again girlfriend, um, Abby De La Royce, Rose, I think that's how you pronounce it. So they're at nine kids. I know the Bible said be fruitful and multiply, but nine? But I can't give him credit. At least they all by the same women, right? Maybe. But let's talk about somebody else who has surpassed nine kids. So there is a NBA star by the name of Young Boy. He's on baby number 10. 10. Like what? Yes, he's on baby number 10. And they all by different women. How can you have 10 kids by a few different women and then call yourself a father? Now, some people that might like, well, he financially taking care of my children, so he good. Finances are good. I'm, I'm, I'm all about making sure that you are taking care of these kids financially. But what about are you mentally doing to these kids with no father figure in their life? And how much stress are you putting on these females to be the mother and the father? Because you want to go out there and keep keep putting your raw oats all over these women and, and just boop, 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 all inside on be like, yeah, girl, you good. Like, come on, man. We got to do better as a society, especially as black people. We have to do better with all this making kids. But you are on 10. You might want to, uh, you and uh, Nick Cannon might want to uh, think about getting the clip clip done down there in the testicles area so you can stop making all these kids i mean it's okay to make kids but god dang bro you don't like 10 and 9 like bro enough is enough i know we all about big families but bro that's that's a lot that's a lot of it's a lot of cannons and that's a lot of daggone young boy out there just flying all over the world like this is something to think about man so we're also going to talk about uh Cam Newton, so he was in the news last week. His girlfriend is upset because she like he's not um, he's not following his temporary agreement to cover all her utilities of uh, while she's at home, and then these utilities are 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 totaling over twenty thousand dollars. Girl, where you living at? Where are you living? Like twenty thousand dollars. I'm thinking like mansion, mansions, because look, I, my little 1,200 square feet house is only $200 for just the electric. Like, girl, where you, uh, okay, so I guess you're looking at electric, you're looking at water, you're looking at sewage, maybe gas, maybe, but bruh, Nick Cannon, um, damn, can do, <laughs> better get it together, bruh, you, hey, you can't, you look, 
I don't think you playing in sports right now, so you might want to uh, find you another job to pay this woman her 20 k you know, so she can pay her utilities. She can, her and your kids going to be sitting in the dark. You can be mad because they're sitting, they sitting in the dark. So, yeah, that's that. So, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about Chris Brown was doing a, um, Chris Brown was doing a, like, at his concert, you pay a little bit of money and you get to go backstage and you get to, uh, you know, take pictures with him and however you feel like you get to talk with him, give him a hug, touch on him, just be an overall crazy fan, right? So now Bow Wow said, hey, he wants some of that money as well. So Bow Wow is charging $1,000 for the fan experience back behind stage. But his fan experience is a little bit different. It's only like uh, so many people, I think between 35 and 45 people, they get, they get to go to a little lounge. They get to sit there and listen. He, he do a couple of songs for them. They have food and things like that. Total price, $1,000. So then I, I beg to ask myself, A, why am I going to a Bow Wow concert? And B, why would I pay Bow Wow $1,000 to just see him? The dude by my height. But then, but then that goes to the point like, what you got that's new right now? Because, I, I, I mean, what you can sing all your old stuff? I mean, I guess. All the old people going to like it. I mean, I guess people my age, but I'm not old. I'm seasoned. So, I guess they going to like it. But I don't know. But I don't think you're $1,000 worthy. I don't think you're... I don't think I'm going to pay a thousand dollars to go back there and see you and be like, ooh, little bow wow, ooh, yay. Yay? I don't know. Now, let that be Beyonce. I'm paying a thousand dollars, maybe two, maybe. It just all depends. You know, Beyonce is my girl. And, you know, I would love to go see her and just rub abos, you know, rub abos with her, you know. I would like to do that. But bow wow, psh, no. I would have to think long and hard for I spend that kind of money on. Spend that money on um, Chris Brown. Even though Chris Brown is from Virginia, Tappahannock to be exact. But I don't think I'm going to pay $1,000 to go backstage with him. Nah, I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think he's worth I don't think he's worth $1,000 neither. But he loves his fans. So I guess, bow wow. But make your money. I'm not mad at you. If they're going to pay $1,000 to go back there and see you. Let them build dog dogs to go see you. So that's that. So last thing I want to hit up in entertainment news, I want to talk about Mr. Robert Kelly himself, Mr. R. Kelly, Mr. Baby Maker, Mr. Some of y'all born off R. Kelly music. So don't talk, don't look at me. Um, but he went to jail. I mean, well, he already in jail. But he went to court again for same charges. He got charged with Chicago. He got charged with another state. I forgot where, but they found him guilty again for for. I don't want to say like he was touching the kids, but he, he coerced, coercing these women to perform sexual acts on him to maybe get a contract to sing. And when I said women, I'm not talking about 21 and older. I'm talking about probably 14 to 17. You know, that age bracket right there. And, bruh, R. Kelly, I'm telling you right here, R. Kelly will never see outside the walls of whatever jail he is sitting in. I hate to say it, but R. Kelly will die in jail. And that is where he belongs. I grew up on R. Kelly. I grew up on Bump and Grind, 12 Play, She Got That Vibe. I grew up on all that. That was R. Kelly the singer. But Robert Kelly the person? It's called a spade a spade. It was a pedophile. Talk about it in the DMs. Let, talk about it in the comments. Let me know how you feel about that in the comments because that's what he was. He was a pedophile. He touched these kids, made... The, he touched these female kids, got them under the pressure to think that, hey, I'm going to give you a record deal if you let me urinate on you and, and do these things to you. Dude belongs in jail. Dude, the dude belongs behind bars the rest of his life. You don't do that. You don't take 
your power you have over somebody and use that to your advantage. Like, bruh, that... Mm. Let's move on, please. All right, let's move on to uh, just national and national news. Y'all know Queen Elizabeth. She passed away. She was on the throne for 70 to 70 years. She did much great things. People cry for her. Yeah, good. Condolences go to her. We cry for her. Good job. Not a fan. Didn't know much about her. Uh, I'm always sad when someone passes. So I'm sorry. She passed away. Her funeral is today. Well, tomorrow, which is Monday. Monday the 19th. That's her funeral. So, yeah. Um, Michelle and Barack went back to the White House, I want to say last week, to reveal their paintings, and their paintings are beautiful. You know, Obama in his remarks talked about how beautiful his wife, how beautiful his queen, his black American queen is, um, and how he's just so, so in love with her oh, after all these years and said some other stuff. I probably will insert the clip here if I can find it. I'll In the White House, alongside portraits of other presidents and first ladies dating back to George and Martha. So it was important to find the right people to paint them. Uh, I want to thank Sharon Sprung for capturing everything I love about Michelle. Her grace, her intelligence, and the fact that she's fine. <laughs> Michelle got up there and she said what she had to say. Only a woman of her statue, of her grace, can throw shade. And it didn't even seem like she was throwing shade. So you listen to exactly what she was saying. She threw shade at the orange guy. I mean, Donald Trump. Former President Donald Trump, sorry, just give him his right title. I'm sorry, I don't want to call him the orange guy. But uh, she gave him, you know, some shade along the way as well, too. I will insert that clip right here. All of this is absolutely necessary. Uh, traditions like this matter, not just for those of us who hold these positions, but for everyone participating in and watching our democracy. You see the people, they make their voices heard with their vote. Um, we hold an inauguration to ensure a peaceful transition of power. Those of us lucky enough to serve work, as Barack said, as hard as we can for as long as we can, as long as the people choose to keep us here. And once our time is up, we move on. And all that remains in this hallowed place are our good efforts and these portraits, uh, portraits that connect our history to the present day, portraits that hang here as history continues to be made. So for me, this day is not just about what has happened. Uh, it's also about what could happen. All right. Since we were talking about the orange, the orange guy, I mean, Donald Trump, since we were talking about him, let's just talk about how right now the Department of Justice uh, they did a search warrant on his Mar-a-Lago residence, a.k.a. when he was president. He called it the Summer White House. Um, they, did a, they did a search warrant on that, and they found like a bunch of classified papers and documents in his, uh, in his residence. And with me being in the service, even like I know the rules. You do not take classified information home with you. I don't care you're the president. You you have some some leniency when you're the president, but you have to return that crap when your time is up. Like when your time is up in the White House, you got to return all that mess back. Like you got that you got all that classified information in a in your residence that is open to the public, and that anybody can walk around and take that stuff. Like they said, some of that stuff was was like top secret. Like, bro, what what was you thinking? And then he comes back and says, they went through my wife's drawers and they went through my son's stuff, you know, and I declassified all that stuff. But no one can, no one can back up your claim. And that's the problem, bruh. You're saying all this stuff, but no one can back it up. Like you are putting people at risk by having that classified stuff out like that. Like, but I, 
In the same way you gave Hillary H E L L, some about lock her up for this for the all the email stuff she had on a private server. I want that same energy when it comes to you. Lock you up too, because what you did is a little bit more of a risk than what she did. So keep that in your mind. And people, if you want to talk about it, my comments are always open. I reply back to your comments. Please, let's get down in the comments. Let's talk about it. You let you Trump supporters and you you other supporters. Let's get down there and let's talk about it. To me, they need to lock him up. I said it and I said it here first. Something's going to happen. He's going to get locked up. But they're gonna find him a lot of money. I pray that they lock him up. I said it. All right, now, uh, with that being said, that's it. That's all the news I have for you today. Like I told you, I promise I won't keep you long, and I promise that I didn't. So, with that being said, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Please share it with your buddy. Have them share it with another buddy. Have them share it with another buddy. Have them share it with their weed friends. You know? When you're smoking your weed, hey, look at this video. It make you laugh long. Weed make you laugh. This will make you laugh even more. So please enjoy that. Last thing I want to say on my final, my final, final thought, positivity. Have a positive mind. Your positive mind will take you places. Do not allow anybody, whether they're family, friends, work people, regardless, do not let them take your positive mindset. Do not let them take your positive attitude away. Remember, misery loves company i'm gonna say it again misery loves company continue to smile continue to be blessed i love you all and i will see you on the next one peace